Okay, so we are continuing from where we left last time and the first element to be checked it's the second dirty beam which is included in the uh, gravitational load resisting system. So, on short, this is discussed regarding the secondary beam. We will consider a full interaction, or let's say an interaction between the secondary beam and the slab. It doesn't matter the type of the slab, even if it's a full slab or using corrugated sheeting. No. Before starting to check the displacement and the strength, we need to have the loads assigned. In this case, they are assigned, but we need to have also the combinations. Now, regarding the combinations for strength, for checking the secondary beam. For ultimate limit state, this is okay. If you have also snow, you should add also snow. For the last floor, on the current floors, you should have different combinations. If you have also chest distribution for life, you should check also with that one. You may have different uh, sections for the beams. And regarding wind, it will not affect uh, the section. So it will have only very, very, very small influence upon the result. Now, this is regarding the strength for the ultimate limit state combination. Regarding serviceability limit state, I will put this here, uh, serviceability limit state 1, and this will be dead load plus life load, and if you have snow load or others, okay, this is the name. And I will put that with partial safety factor of 1, and life with partial safety factor of 1, again, okay. If you have snow, that will be with 0.7. Again, there are some other um, alternatives, let's say, if you have checked uh, CR0 from 2020, uh, 2012, where you have frequent characteristic combinations, so on and so forth, that are mostly, mostly for concrete. You may use some if you want, but this is at least an um, example of how to check for serviceability in the state for displacement. Okay? Now, we have these combinations. If we want to check to have the envelope in SAP, we need to specify here the code. Here it will be steel design, okay? That icon on the top with steel, this one, okay? View revise and the code, it's what type of code? <coughs> A A S A I S C. What's what type of code it is, is that? European, Japanese, American, what do you believe? It's an American code, okay? We need to specify what type of code in our situation. Here you have the list, okay? What would you choose? Euro code 3, okay? Steel design. It's uh, 2005 with an Arnex from 2014. Okay, and after specifying that code, you see that we have all the parameters changed, yes? Even for the country, so on and so forth, for class, for framing type, for Q, so on and so forth. Now, uh, I will show you how to perform the design using SAP, even for uh, this secondary beam, even for moment resisting frame, centrally braced, essentially placed, but for your project, I suggest designing using spreadsheets, at least once, such that you understand how to do that for elements. After that, you can use software checking, that's no problem. But if you use from the beginning software checking, you won't understand how the software works, what parameters to change in order to obtain better results. Because you might get, okay, I have 1,000 kiloton meters. Is it okay or is it not? And if you do not understand the bit from behind, you will get no. Okay? So after this, I specify the code. I need to go to select design combinations. And here, 
I have two options. I will uncheck automatically generate code based design load combinations because according to the code it will uh, implement by itself. Okay? But that won't do it according to CR0. That's why you do it by hand because CR0 it's not implemented here. Okay? And you have strength and deflection. Let's go with strength. And for strength we have this. This is the first one and we'll perform the check. Just one second, I need to run it because the last combination was not added. Okay. Okay, it's not added. And in order to see the values, you go start design check of the structure. <coughs> if you go in the designated view, you'll see the elements. Okay, here, or let's say we do it here. Now, let's go to all the levels. You see that we have red and orange, yes? Now, if I want to see the utilization factor, I go to display design info and I check for what type of output I want. Here it's enough to check for maximum stress ratio and click select. Okay? And what are the values in the range? What can we see for secondary beams? They are? They are not resisting, but the current ones, okay? We have 1.33 and we have 0 0.9 for this one, okay? If we check, we have uh, detail, display details for selected items and here we have the combination, okay? Oh, it's my mouse. Here, okay, here's the combination. Here we have just one. If you have five combinations, it will perform the check for all of them, and the last value highlighted will be at the uh, critical section. Okay, so it will be 1.33. Now, let's check for summary. Okay, we have here this is the label of the frame, this is the section, this is the class of the cross section. Okay, these are the properties. And we have a bending moment of 60 kilonewtons meter, okay? And we have the check here, it's 1.33. It's 1.33 from the second term. So here it's the term from actual force. From actual force is zero. Here it's zero. Ratio between NED over N. RD and CRD in this case or LTR. Now we have interaction between actual force and bending moment and there are two terms. Okay? The first term is this one, okay, and the last term is this one. This is bending moment on the minor axis and it is zero. So we have bending moment only on major axis and the ratio is 1.33. So I have a bending moment of 90, static computation. And I want to check the resistance. The resistance is given here, below. Okay? So, MCRD is 222. MBRD is 67. This is actually the buckling resistance to bending, okay? Of that cross section. And here you have the factors. I have curve A for lateral torsional buckling, I have alpha LT, uh, lambda bar LT, phi LT, and he LT, okay? So, if I go to Eurocode 3, yes?
I go to chapter 6.32 ok and I have the buckling resistance and I have the general case for lateral torsional buckling curves or I have for rolled section and it's, it's according to rolled section ok so I need to check HLT ok HLT taken also the boundary conditions HLT modified ok but it's this one ok and HLT it's 0 3 0, 4 so it reduces with 70% the plastic capacity and this is basically this one ok we also have the critical elastic critical bending moment elastic critical bending moment it's needed here ok in both approaches it's here ok the elastic critical moment is computed according to CR just one second According to this document, if you search elastic critical moment, elastic critical moment of lateral torsional buckling, you get on the internet this um, PDF, okay? And <laughs> if you use this formula, you get that value, okay? You need to take the factors <laughs> accordingly and so on and so forth. However, what have we discussed regarding our hypothesis. Does the secondary beam lose stability? Is it considered to fail due to stability loss, due to buckling? No, we consider an interaction between we consider an interaction between the slab and the secondary beam. Therefore, stability loss should not be taken into consideration. Okay, how we do that? We should specify, for example, the buckling factors. Okay, let's check one more time. One second. Uh, here are presented just the interaction values, so on and so forth. But if you go to flexure, you see here for basic factors for buckling mode, you see K factor and L factor. So, K factor regarding the buckling length, okay? If I have double pinned element, I have a buckling factor mu of 1. If I have a double fixed element, I have a buckling factor ideally, ideally, because we discussed about here, ideally, of how much? Remember? Double fixed, double fixed yes. 0 0.5, okay. These are regarding the ideal situations. When we will go to column design, so on and so forth, the interaction, I will present another example regarding how you can compute exactly those factors and how SAP does it here. But we need to change this, okay? Basically, these factors. And where do we change them? You need to select an element, okay, let's say this beam. You go to view revise overrides to do that. And here you go to embrace length ratio, okay, LY, LZ, and LTB, okay. And here you just specify a very, very small value, let's say 0 0.01, 0 0.001, something like that, okay. Given that, imagine that 0 0.001 
multiply with the length, it will give a very, very uh, short value, a very small value for the length. So a very large capacity for stability uh, moment, okay? So it will be neglected. That's <coughs> like a hint, a cheat, okay? Let's do like that. And I will perform the check again. And you see that only for the element that I selected, I now have <coughs> from red, I have blue. And I have 0 0.405, yes? Okay, if I go back to the summary, I have the same ratio, okay? But it's not according to that interaction. You see that I have here MYED over MNID. Okay, that's according to this uh, paragraph, 6291. So 6291, I think it considers interaction, I'm not sure. 6291. Okay, it considers some sort of interaction if the ratio is needed according to this, okay? But if you compute 90 divided by 222, you get that 0 0.05. It's very important, and that's why I do this, it's very important to know how to check that values, okay? That's why I suggest do once on spreadsheet, and then, okay, you can do it softer. It's not a problem. That's why. Because now you can check, okay, what's alpha? How it, uh, has it taken it? Look, this is an uh, elastic critical moment. It's an absurd value such that it doesn't consider stability. Okay, so it's just a cheat. Um, let's say a way to get out of that. Okay, now this is the ratio regarding strength. What's your opinion? Should I reduce or not the cross section? Can I reduce it based on that value, on 0 0.4? I need to be below one, but can I reduce? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I can reduce. Imagine having this, okay? You design according to strength and you leave 60%. We haven't reached uh, serviceability, okay? So we design according to strength and I am at 60% uh, reserve. I'm not economically efficient. Imagine just reducing one section for all that beams for that mass. You get a pretty large reduction in terms of mass and in terms of money, let's say, okay? Because you go on uh, mass to meter, you have a reduction and you have a reduction on all the elements and you have a lot of secondary beams in your project, yes? No. Let's say addressing on, I don't know, IP 240. Assign frame sections. I need to define it. Import European, European catalog. S355, okay, okay, okay. Let's say IP240. Okay, just... I haven't saved that. That's why. Okay. Run again.
for the sake of exercise to see that it takes an envelope I will put also this combination but you understand that it's a not a strand combination but just for you to understand how it will take the envelope okay so for any beam let's say this one it doesn't matter you see that now you have for ULS1 and this is the largest value and if you go to SLS1 another combination you see this value okay so it will highlight an envelope and the critical combination okay and all the time you go to that value and you check <coughs> okay that's how you work with envelope and get the critical case the critical internal stresses now let's go to our new section I have 0 0.7 let's say and I have 90 and the capacity of 130 okay plastic it equals with stability loss okay 0 0.7 can I go lower I can go even with IP 220 let's say but this is due to strength okay let's try to assess also stability yes okay you can do stability uh, displacement sorry vertical displacement that's yes? i can highlight the bending moments in serviceability limit state combination okay and let's choose many moment 3d here okay this beam should be just one second to make sure it's the same no I, I'm at 4 meters so this is actually this one ok it doesn't matter just to be consistent and this and this display ok so I want to see the internal stresses and the displacements ok so this beam it's this beam ok and I see a bending moment from this combination of 64 kiloton meters a shear force of 42 and I see a deflection in meters let's make it a bit easier in millimeters and I put show maximum so I get a vertical displacement of 29.36 millimeters. Okay, we discussed a bit earlier regarding the limits. And the limits should be for secondary beam if the design the client does not specify anything else, L over 250. Now for the 6 meters beam, we have 24 millimeters. Okay. How is this compared to our limit so is our section checked the IP 240 okay okay what do we need to do okay so I need to increase the section and I should specify an IP 270 it's nothing in between okay Perform design again. Okay, and it was 0 0.7. Now I am at 0 0.52. Okay, good. And this beam, it's now at 19 millimeters. 19, it's less than 24. Yes. Okay. So we have a proper cross section also to. Uh, according to serviceability limit states. Conclusion. What's the dominant criteria in choosing the cross section? In this case, having the hypothesis of uh, not considering stability loss, 
for our case. The vertical deflection, okay? So this is the dominant criteria for design, okay? Now, there are also variations here if you go relative to B-mens or relative to B-minimum or absolute. There are some small marginal values, but let's say if you pick something in between, not be at the limit, yes, you'll be below that and you'll have a proper cross-section. Now, imagine that for strength you are at 50%. Okay, so it's a bit intuitive, but you also need to specify and um, satisfy the requirements for serviceability limit states. Okay, so that are also important, not only strength and not only stability. Okay, now I will try to exemplify the differences when trying to assess the second order effects using theta factor according to old version of Eurocode and what's implemented also in P100 and according to new version of Eurocode and what I showed in the first uh, part regarding how to define general displacement and section cards to obtain the forces. On short, I defined general displacements at each sub-level, yes, and in addition to what I previously showed you, I added also on U2 the value 1 and minus 1. So I can use the same general displacement to assess on both directions at the same time. Okay? And I have at each story. Here, 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 and here to check the inter-story drift. Now, regarding the combinations, this is the approach when we assess on one direction independently. I will show you how to do it um, considering uh, an interaction between the two. So, for the displacement combination, for the drift, for SLS on X direction, you put just this one. On Y direction, you put Y. And I have different spectrum with different Q factors, okay? On in case of ultimate limit state, it's this one on X and on Y, this one. Okay, just a second. This is okay. Okay, displacements. Yes, this is with uh, C factor. Okay, now I will run the model. And let's assess the displacement. We will take from P100 a limit of, for the interstory drift, of 0.0075H. H being 4000 millimeters. Okay. The limit is actually as we discussed, 30 millimeters, yes? Okay, and let's assess pretty quickly in the uh, design. As I showed you, you can do it graphically. Displacements on X due to serviceability limit state, like that. Okay, and assess in millimeters. And it should perform like that. Okay, we have 11, 29 minus 11, so on and so forth. But if I want to do it graphically, I will do like this. Joint displacements, generalized, and I select the case. My first case that I want to check, it's on X. So on moment resisting frame direction. <coughs> and I have for the first, fourth, first level, sorry, 11.7. Second level 17.36, 15.76, 12, and 7. Okay, from this point of view, how is the structure configured? Is it okay? Does it satisfy the requirements? Yes. It satisfies the requirements. The largest value is at the second level. Okay, I can check also on the other direction. I just need to specify SLS on Y on displacements and I have 
between uh, 19 and 28. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Okay, no, it's okay. X it's on a moment resisting frame. However, I have very large displacements here compared compared to moment resisting frame. Why? Because probably the sections for our braces are a bit too small. Okay, the limit it's satisfied. Okay, so we have 28.8, 28.6, less than 30. It's okay. But usually, a brace system it's much more rigid than a moment-resisting frame. Okay, so it should be increased. For sure, this will happen due to strength design. Okay, but we can leave it as it is due to this displacement. Okay, now the structure. Let's say it's some sort configured pre-dimensioned. We can check also the second-order effects if we haven't done it with alpha critic. Okay. Again, I suggest doing alpha critic iterations as much as possible when you are using design. So when you are iterating through sections for the moment resisting frame, for the brace frame. Because it's very quick and you can see if you need to check or not and add or not second order effects. Leave theta for the last iteration. So perform all your design using alpha critic and assess also with theta it should confirm what alpha critic says but nonetheless how you do that first these are the main differences so also in eurocode 8 in current version and in p100 we have theta with this formula p total minus relative display uh, multiplied with relative displacement divided by v total multiplied with h and by p total we have vertical force, V total shear force, DR relative displacement and H story height. The main difference is that the forces are from dissipative combination on that direction and relative displacement is in ultimate limit state displacement combination. So we have a Q times larger force for the displacement. In the next version of Eurocode, which will be implemented, this is the current project, just one second. You have two approaches, and basically, you can take this, okay? SD mean, uh, being uh, significant damage or ultimate limit state, so it's the same. And you have P total and V total, the same uh, forces with the same significance. DRSD, the relative displacement from displacement combination for ultimate limit state. And we have these factors, QR and QS, okay? And here they should be taken in according according to chapters 10 to 15 according to your materials. Okay, if you use this approach or if you use this one, then you should compute uh, story shear in the displacement based approach. Okay, let's go to the chapter for steel structures to see QR and QS for our structure. concrete it should be here okay so we have for multi frame multi-story moment resisting frames qr it's 1.3 q it's 6.5 the same as it was before and actually qs you have here equal to 1.5 okay it says here that for qr and qd in, uh, and the values of Q are obtained as the product of Q, D, Q, R, Q, S equal to 1.5. So that's how it was obtained this one. Okay, now let's perform an iteration to see actually what we are dealing with. Now I will go to show tables and instead of this, let's take the forces. I've already 
uh, define the section cuts for each so story. Yes, so display show tables. Add a section cut, and I will do let's say just one second. It's this one dissipative combination on x direction. So moment resisting frame. Okay, okay. I will take this in kilonewtons. Sorry. Control T. This I will take this. Okay. Should take us okay. F one, F two, and F three. Okay. <coughs> now uh, this is F one. It's on X, so it's V total, and F three. It's on Z. Okay, and it's P total. Okay, and we have. We should have a absolute a max between those three those two values okay so we have um, absolute from this to have all the values from this one and here we have a max between this and this okay and it should be like this pretty quick okay there might be some differences at the fourth, fifth decimal, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is this. I will do it for this one. Okay, and here we have this. Okay, so here we have V total and P total. Okay, now we need the displacements <laughs> the displacements are joint displacement absolute generalized and we need to go to displacement combination and add these ones uh, we can do it like this and just multiply with 1000 okay so we'll do it like that and the same it's here the r and it's absolute max value between these two okay now these are consistent and I have here theta x okay and theta should be p total so it's this value multiplied with dr which is this value divided by let's go using the first iteration V total which is this one multiply with let's say I will put here H but in meters okay to have it consistent for being meters okay H story height okay now we have this this and this is with blocked cell Okay, and you have these values. Actually, these values are pretty good. You don't have 0 0.82, so on and so forth. Okay, you have the values between 0 0.05 and 0 0.185. What does it mean? Uh, we need to take into account the cell 
<coughs> on x direction using an amplification factor okay however we have alpha critic larger than 10 okay now let's try to have the same uh, result okay and add that factors qr was One point three, okay, and QS equal with one point five. That's what I understand currently, okay. So that's one. Okay, so if I want to address the current formula which will be implemented, I just need to multiply here with 1.95, okay, meaning 1.3 and 1.5, okay, and how do the results change? The smaller than 0 0.1, so in this case, do I need to take into consideration second? No. And the results provided by alpha critic, by our buckling analysis, and the global buckling mode, correlated with these results, are now consistent. Okay? That's the thing. If you go brutally and you divide here with Q, yes, that's the difference between this uh, quantity and this quantity. That's why. Okay, because that's the difference. Now, if you do that the same approach, but on other direction, you should obtain the same. So, this the results for let's just make a copy. It's 30 seconds. Okay. Sheet 3. Okay. No. Uh, here, here, and I will do on Y. Okay, perfectly. And what I copied. These are a bit larger. Okay, and I need to take the forces. And the forces are from this combination but the output is this one okay and you might see a great difference in the values okay and here you have values larger indeed here you need to check to check because you have Look, on X, when I go on X, I have values only on F1, which is correct. On Y, I have values on F1 and F2, and I should have only on F2, okay? That's why, because I should have only U2. Now you see that on X I do not have value on F1. Now it's correct if you want to perform only independent checks. Okay. Because this needs to be not from the first but from the second. 
Okay. So it's correct, and this is theta y. So, as expected, due to second order effects or stiffness, okay, how are the values here compared with the values here? They are smaller, yes, as expected for the brace system, okay? And all of them at each level are less than 0 0.1. So, we need not to take into account second order effects. This is how you perform theta on both directions consistently using sub. I think it was 20 minutes, okay? Any questions? Is there any difference if we have the same behavior factor Q or we need to perform in this way? So it doesn't change anything? How, how you have the same behavior factor? I have this, C, uh, this CM okay. with moment resisting for four, four, yes. four and but it, X brace is also four. <coughs> X brace is also four, okay. Um, just check here. So this will be 1.3 and 1.5, and it was 1.95, and you had X braces. Yes. Okay, and QR, it's actually 1.1 or 1. This is a bit strange why it's different, this and this, but it will be different because it's 1.3 multiplied with 1.5 and 1.95 here okay and for the other way even even in my case it was v i should take 1.1 multiplied so this should be 1.3 multiplied with 1.1 1.1 multiplied 1.5 sorry 1.5 Sorry, good point. Please don't break. Thanks. Okay, so 1.65. Six. 65, okay. okay. So, assess, assess, uh, I suggest assessing uh, yes on both directions even if you have the same behavior factor because you see there are mis misleadings, yes. And also the, structures, the structure will behave differently. The force output will be different mm. in F1 and F2. You see here you have 1629 and here I have 4, 430. Okay. Yeah. And also the displacements are correlated accordingly to that pair, okay? Mm. So you need to do it on both directions. Okay. Other questions? An alternative approach regarding second order effects, but specifically only to ductility class three, okay, so only for this, may be considered for steel structures using Just one second, using this formula, okay? So, theta according to this. What's different from the normal one is that the factors here are uh, taking into account the actual overstrength that may be computed. So, according to the values from the table, we have 1.95 here, the product. According to this formula, we have QR, which is the same, we have th uh, theta d, which is the overstrength ratio, and uh, omega rm. Omega rm for S355, it's 125, okay? Uh, QR was 1.1, just one second to check. Okay, it's one point, sorry, 1.3. Okay, and we have the overstrength. Now, the overstrength, uh, should be the least value. No, I will present this in a few minutes, but regarding 
the moment resisting frame, let's say a current one, and checking from dissipative combination, so from seismic to check for the um, oversink ratio, regarding only what is provided by um, strength, it should be 285 uh, divided by one fourth, okay, and it should be two, okay. If we go to take into consideration also stability, we have 260, okay, and the over the factor should be 0 0.5 reverse the utilization factor of almost two something, okay. So let's take it two now. Here we multiply with this factor and we get 3.3. So you see there it's a big difference between 1.95 considering this and we have 3. So actually when we have a larger value here, the denominator, we get smaller value. So we are more economical and the impact should be like this. In the formula I will just change this to this okay so we have 0 0.958 and if i check here okay so it was greatly reduced so from 0 0.08 to 0 0.05 the same is also for other directions so taking this to account when you design in liquidity class 3 that you can be a bit more precise regarding what's presented in the code Okay, continuing from the gravity load resisting system, we are moving forward to the first lateral load resisting system, which is the moment resisting frame, okay, on this direction. Now, uh, we already performed some iterations and we reduced the cross sections because the, the initially chose one were pretty inefficient. Okay, now we managed to stick to IP330 for the main beam and HEB360 for all colors. Okay. I've already uh, run the model and I want to show you the displacement. So initially we had 17, the greatest one, okay, for serviceability limit state, for interstory drift. Now we have the largest value for second story 28 less than 30 so we are pretty much at the limit okay now if we want to check the main beam i've implemented here the following combinations for persistent design dead, li uh, dead load plus life load okay i won't repeat please add also the imperfections in each case and for the transient design situation Dead load, life load with 0, 3. If you have snow load, <coughs> add consistently and seismic action on x direction. Okay, and I will implement here a cross section check. And meanwhile, on short for the spreadsheet, in the spreadsheet, you have for the main beam serviceability limit checks, vertical deflection, and ultimate limit checks, strength and stability, okay? According to the paragraphs from Eurocore 3, in bending moment, in shear force, and lateral torsional buckling, okay? Now, the design principle is to have the main beam as dissipative, and in part 6, you have the um, specifications on how to assess this element okay so for the beams you need to have med over m plastic less than one actual force and shear force okay and you have this according to the code the potential shear force that might um, develop and Assuming that we won't reach, we will reach also the column design. We should be able to assess the overhang factor omega t, okay, which should be from the beams, and the value should be this one m plastic over med, and it will be multiplied with one one and one 
25 in case of S355 uh, steel grade and it should be taken the minimum value. Now, going back to SAP, let's see the values. This is for a current frame and this is for the marginal frame, okay? For the marginal frame I have 0 0.312 and if I check here, let's see, I have MED 80 and capacity is 266 due to um, stability loss. Okay. And it's only for persistent. From seismic we have 0 0.25, which is the largest. Okay. On a current frame, I have 0 0.679 for persistent and 0. 4, 1 from seismic. But take care that here I uh, some values were altered. You see that here it's value 2. For that the torsion bucket this sub changed and I think I changed for this for this one I think I changed manually. Yes, I've implemented here in overrides for this beam 0 0.33 for the length. So 0 0.33 multiplied with uh, 6 it's 2 meters what it's desired. So it's 0 0.7 and 0 point three one four so on and so forth. No, 0 0.474 this one. 478, okay? Now You can check also here the values and I want to discuss a bit regarding homogeneity. So the section are consistent for persistent design. Let's discuss about seismic. So I will take this and show only seismic. Indeed I need to change the values, yes, for buckling length for all of them. Okay. But this is what I wanted to show. So we need to not forget about homogeneity criteria. So let's take the largest value, which is 0 0.534, 0 0.541. 0 0.541 multiplied with 0 0.25, it's 0 0.13. Okay, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.13, we should not have a value less than 0 0.11. Do we have in this frame a utilization factor less than 0 0.11? Okay, consider then we should have changed also the buckling length for all beams, but take this <coughs> into consideration. Is it correct or not? Okay, if this were 0 0.398, you should reduce the section for the last level. There are some requirements, this is also valid for the links also, that you can neglect the last story in assessing the homogeneity. There are some requirements, but try to perform on all levels, okay? So this is mandatory. This is not like uh, it's nice to have, no. Look, you should not have a variation less than 25%, okay? Now, if you want to assess omega t, you have two options. Either do it using the provision from P100 regarding strength. So let's do it for this one. It should be MED, it's 117, M plastic, it's 285. So it's 285 divided by 117. It's 2.5. Let's say this is this should be the minimum value. 1.1 multiplied 1.25 multiplied with this one, it's 3.35. Okay, you see that we have a small difference between plastic and um, buckling resistance. You can either perform quickly taking the largest value 0. 
541, reverse it, and multiply this with 1.1 and 1.25. Okay, the values are more or less because I take I've taken 4 4 5 4 1, not 4 7 8. However, this considers also stability loss, so it's not quite the same as the provision for uh, P100, but it takes overall account of stability. Just make sure that you change the buckling length accordingly, okay? Not to have buckling length of 6. That's one thing. And that omega t factor will be implemented on this direction for the columns. For the other direction will be assessed according to the other lateral load resisting system which is the braced one. Centrically or eccentrically braced. Okay. Questions regarding modeling in SAP and how to assess this. Try also to, last thing, try also to assess a bit the bending moment diagrams to see that they are correct. Okay, so for se from seismic action you should have, you should have plus and minus being an envelope. Okay, so something like that. And uh, assess the behavior of the structure. Do not forget that we reduced a lot the sections. So here it will be something like alpha critic. I'm pretty sure we have less than 10. Indeed, we have seven. So in this case, we should take into consideration second order effects. And second order effects will be taken in the combination in seismic one, for example, of root wind in one G plus 0 0.3 life plus here where it's one AD, we go to Euro code three divided we should take another 15% into account for the lateral loads so here it will be 1.15 where do we implement this? here here 1.15 okay do not neglect that we did not consider for the persistent we considered only gravitational and in the case with wind there might be a change in the critical combination okay so it might be actually the seismic and not the persistent just make sure to assess properly the, the structure okay